Hello, and thank you for joining this Neurology Live Peers and Perspectives presentation titled Expert Perspectives, Contemporary Data on Treating Multiple Sclerosis Exacerbations. Today, we are going to discuss current data on treating exacerbations in multiple sclerosis. I am Dr. Matthew Baker, a neurologist practicing in Naples, Florida. Joining me today is Dr. Jeffrey Kaplan, a neurologist practicing in Overland Park, Kansas. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's begin. Dr. Kaplan, I was wondering if you could start by maybe giving us an overview on our goals of therapy in treating relapsing MS. Well, Matt, I'm going to use this question as a platform for a couple of things. One that's definitely been a mainstay of my, ther mainstay of my therapy for many years, and that is, is that as we know that there is the difference between what we call induction therapy of multiple sclerosis and escalation therapy of multiple sclerosis. As you know, escalation therapy has been a popular therapy for many years, and that is that we start with medications that have lower efficacy but lower risk, and then if patients break through, we move up a level, and then people break through again, and then we go up to the high efficacy medications. So like the low efficacy medications would be uh, something such as, um, uh, you know, medications that are injectables, and then the, uh, you know, maybe the middle of the row will be our oral medications, and then the higher roads are usually more infusing, infusible medications. So I fall under the theory of the induction therapy. I feel it's extremely important to start patients off on high efficacy medications to control their multiple sclerosis uh, early on when the disease has more of an inflammatory component versus a neurodegenerative component. Um, and so this has been the mainstay of my therapy, mainstay of my therapy for a long period of time. So um, just a quick question about that. In using these higher efficacy medications, uh, do you encounter uh, relapses uh, frequently or less frequently? Or, and, and when you do see a relapse, what, what's your approach to, to relapse therapy in those patients? So overall, I do see relatively less relapses with the high efficacy therapies, but when I do, um, my initial approach is always to start with intravenous salumedrol, usually a dose of one gram IV for five days. And then one thing that's very, very important to do in patients like this is to, um, is to reevaluate the patient, bring the patient back in about seven to 10 days after the relapse starts to see how well they've done with the IV salumedrol. That's very crucial. Um, and because of that, you might need to give additional therapy. So in patients who um, do not respond very well to the initial uh, IV salumedrol, I, I do have alternatives. What might those alternatives be? And are there other circumstances in which IV solumedrol may not be a, a great option? So basically the alternatives that I use, my first choice is ACTHAR and the official way of stating this is repository corticotropin injection. But uh, you know, as we know, ACTHAR is an intravenous uh, injection that uh, is, is basically made up of several adrenocorticotrophal, adrenal corticotrophic hormones and analogs and other pituitary peptides that stimulate uh, corticosteroid production. And it's an agonist for all five of the melanocortin receptors. It has you know, anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory effects. Uh, other choices that we have at our disposal is plasma exchange therapy. With plasma exchange therapy, I will give uh, usually five plasma exchange therapies over a period of seven days. I usually do the theory of two on, one off, two on, one off, and then the final dose, and then the patient is either able, is able to be discharged at that time. Now, as we all know, life has had tremendous change over the last few months due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So the last few patients that I've done plasma exchange on I have been able to do as an outpatient. Sometimes I'll initiate it as an inpatient, and then I will switch to outpatient therapy. Um, and uh, the only disadvantage of that is, is the catheter that they have is a permanent dialysis catheter. It's a little bit more painful for the pain patient, but they clearly prefer this instead of being in the hospital for a period of seven days. 
And then lastly, one therapy that has not had as much proven efficacy, but is still occasionally used by myself, and I know occasionally used by several multiple sclerosis physicians, is IVIG therapy. Hmm. Do you ever use um, oral, uh, high-dose oral therapy in, in patients that, that those, you know, especially with this pandemic, patients aren't enthusiastic about running to an infusion center or to the hospital for treatment? Has that come into uh, your practice at all? It has more recently since there have been studies out that have shown that high-dose oral prednisone or high-dose methylprednisolone uh, in equivalent doses has uh, been relatively effective. The only thing is my patients do t tend to have more side effects with that, more gastrointestinal mm -hmm. side effects with the oral versus intravenous therapies. A lot of pills to swallow every day. Yes, isn't it? absolutely. <laughs>